$15 a pair? How good are they? And how far do they transmit? Keep watching and find out. Look at this, especially the frequencies. Yep, this was $15 for two walkie-talkies in Kmart. One frequency is two metres, and the other, I think, in the aircraft band, or just above it. Having a look at the blurb on the packet, up to 300 metres talking range, described as easy to use with push to talk, and fun for kids outdoor activities. As for the real frequency, there's a little dot, 476.425 megahertz. Here in Australia, that's UHF CB channel one. Actually a repeater output. I had a look at other radios in the shop and they were all on this frequency. So they could talk to one another, but if there's interference, then bad luck since the single channel. There's a whole list of precautions, almost as long as your arm. But the thing in the big print, warning, 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 this device is capable of communication with CB radio transceivers. Oh, and please keep the packaging for further reference. Yep, with CBs, you can have big, bad, swearing truck drivers. So yeah, maybe you better not give this radio to a kid unless they already talk like truckies themselves. Have a look at this, very light, very plasticky, about what you'd expect for seven bucks 50 each. It is confirmed on the radio right there. 476.425 megahertz. And there's the uh, tick symbol thing. Open the battery cover with a screwdriver. Okay. And it talks about part 15 of the FCC rules, which is odd because FCC is American and we in Australia have different rules, including what happens on 476, 425 megahertz. So yeah, I think they've just used this is a same model from some other radio. There is a belt clip, but nah, I wouldn't trust it. Anyway, let's get some batteries in. Oh, there's not even a push to talk. What happens? Well, here you've got on and off, and here you've got talk. So yeah, um, all these are fake. We'll just peel this off. Oh, I just realized I shouldn't have started peeling it off. When, when you actually peel it off, there's actually nothing underneath. So, yet yeah, we'll leave it as is, and people can see that this is a fake amateur two meter radio. Does this have a squelch or not? Keep watching, and we'll find out. Okay, well, got a screwdriver here. But how do we get this open? This is impossible to open. Okay, well, I'm not going to apply too much force, but I've just noticed something here on the belt clip. Push downward to release belt clip and replace battery. So, move the belt clip, and there is a hidden screw. So, that's attached to the battery case, so let's unscrew that. And this is the secret to success, finding the hidden screw. 
some things have screws concealed under labels. Anyway, with the screw off, that's easy. Oh, maybe I didn't need to get the screw all the way out, but uh, it looks like there's a bit of a plastic thing there. Anyway, there's the battery holder. It uses AA batteries. I bought triple A's. At least it means it will probably have some decent battery life. Now we're set up with batteries. Turn them on. LED comes up, so that's what it was in the top right, not a microphone. Unfortunately, the LED is on all the time, which is bad for battery economy. Now, there's not even a volume control on this. And the push to talk is not in a particularly convenient position. Um, when I press it with my left thumb, it actually covers the microphone. But anyway, let's see if it works. Wally, Harley. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, there's a funny echo. Um, it almost sounds like there's a delay. In fact, with the delay, I'm not even getting feedback when I hold the radios together. So, I'm not sure, there's some odd circuitry. I don't think this is transmitting quite in real time. I think there's a very short delay, maybe a tenth of a second, and that's causing the strange echo effect. But, anyway, if I move away, then that's of course not a problem. Um, there'll be no audio feedback, feedback or echo. The, the volume, volume isn't super high. high. Uh, the thing, thing does have a squelch. Um, it's preset, no, no ways, ways to adjust it. it. So, so if, if signals are weak, then bad luck. luck. Just, just have, have to stand, stand on the hill. And we're just trying the other one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And, and it sounds, sounds pretty, pretty similar. similar. Okay, I think the audio is quite, quite good. good. We'll, we'll do a test later on, on when I'm away from the camera, camera and you can, can hear it a bit better. better. How do we know this is actually on 476425? Well, I've got another transceiver. One, two, three. One, two, three. Harley. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yep, yep, we're, we're transmitting, transmitting on 476425, and we are hearing it. So yeah, yeah definitely, definitely receiving 476425, UHF-CD channel 1. What we'll now do is we'll use a bell thing, which can receive 476425, and see what the audio from this cheap walkie-talkie sounds like on that. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four, about one centimetre from the microphone. Yeah, the audio sounds quite good. Bit of a distinctive tail there. Now going to do a receiving test. One of the radios is indoors at about head height on a bookshelf. I'll oh, now wander, wander around, around outside, outside and see, see what, what range, range I get. get. Okay, we're just outside the front door, just outside the front door, so there should be no echo.
about 70 metres away, 70 metres away, 70 metres away. Okay, now about 100 metres away, metres away. We're in suburbia, so it's most single storey houses. 100 metres away, 100 metres away. Uh, we'll now just cross the street and uh, now probably about uh, 110 metres away. 110 metres away. This is a test on 476425. So, I is out there, Tim. Well that was a test with one of the radios inside and walking around outside. This time we'll try for more favourable conditions. Both radios outdoors and both almost line of sight, right here by the beach. Well I'm just amongst some bush right behind the water. I'll try and hide this somewhere where no one can see it. It's not very high, but I'm having a problem in finding a way to lock the PTT on all the time. But right here is a branch, and if I put this on a fence ledge, I just stick that in there, then there's enough pressure to hold the PTT down. Now, not particularly favourable as it's horizontally polarised and not vertical. But, that will do for a simple range test. You might be able to hear the waves, they're just through there. So not quite line of sight, but very close. Here's the receiving unit. You probably can't hear it because it's fully quieting, but it is getting a signal. Just holding the radio up to the camera's microphone. So I'll now go for a bit of a walk and walk to the point where it starts to cut out. About 30 metres away and of course it's fully quieting. Okay, about 100 metres the other way and still very, very solid signal. Now at 200 metres, maybe a bit over. You can hear it getting a bit noisy at certain directions. It still would be fully quieting if I stood in the right place. Okay, now 300 metres. And it's still quite a good signal, dropping out a bit more. This is 400 metres. This is 450 metres. And when I get up here, I've got a little bit extra height and it's a really solid signal. If I lifted the transmitter, then that range would be even more. So if you were standing on a, on a seat or 
a vehicle or even had the radio up on a pole and extended the wires to the microphone and speaker then although we're getting close to 500 meters now I'd imagine it should be possible with a bit of extra height to get say a kilometer maybe 1.5 kilometers just up here a little bit above the sand and a pretty solid signal this should be a familiar location where we hold the occasional Melbourne QRP by the bay time to recover was it in here? I think so. To summarise, outside around 500 metres. Add a bit extra height, even if it's just standing on a seat, then you could get maybe a kilometre. Even adding a metre of height makes a huge difference to the range with a handheld transceiver. The range though is considerably less than what you'd get if you spent a bit more with say a half watt 40 channel UHF CB radio. With something like that you might get three kilometers between units and especially because it's frequency agile and probably has a better antenna plus the greater power you'd be able to make contacts if you're elevated at distances of like 5, 10, 20, even 50 kilometers. But that's not the market that these radios are designed for. These are basically kids walkie talkies. Value for money, $15 the pair, it's actually pretty good. Although, at this price bracket, if you pay a little bit more, you do get a lot more performance. The main shortcoming is its single channel. Not only that, but it's on a UHF CB channel. And if you have a channel one repeater in your area, then the strong signal from that may overpower the signal from your other radio. So, might not be the best idea to give something like this to a child if you're in an area with a Channel 1 CB repeater. So that's it for this video. Hope it's been useful. These could even be a stocking stuffer for a kid who's showing their first interest in radio. Far better than the very, very cheap walkie-talkies because it at least has a squelch is frequency stable and a lot more range than the very cheapies that might only go 20 or 30 meters. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever bought one of these and your own experiences.